Activator. Welcome to Ministry of Awesome's Coffee and Jam number 162. Yeah. Right. Happy Tuesday to you all. We have a very special announcement today to make, but before I get to that, um, I'll cover the really boring stuff first. So, health and safety. Um, if in the event of an emergency, if you need to uh, exit the building, there are four exits, one on each end of the building and the corridor, so please leave your things behind, especially the hot drinks, as they're hazards to everyone else. I'll make sure the bathrooms are clean. Wendy from the BNZ Lounge will make sure that we dial 111 emergency services, and that is what you need to know. So that's the health and safety stuff. So, 162 coffee, 100 60 Seconds Coffee and Jam um, is here. So we have two amazing speakers today. The way this works, uh, first off, anyone new to Coffee and Jam? Never been? Awesome. Welcome. Thank you for coming today, especially for our very, very special event. Sounds like you brought a friend. That's great. He's not a friend. He's an associate. Uh, <laughs> pitching their awesome idea or business or project that they're working on. The second person, hi friends, passing by. Um, the second person is uh, speaking about a more educational slot that we offer, something that the community wants to know about, that they want to share and speak about. Between the two speakers is a break for um, the coffee and the jam. The donation box is back there in case you want to drop some cash and coins into. Um, and then at the end, we do shout-outs. So shout-outs are the times where you in the community can raise your hand and say, hey, it's me looking for a job. Or, hey, it's me need to move the house this weekend. Can you, can I borrow your trailer or whatever it is. It's literally open to anything and everything, but the point is it's 20 seconds only. So quick shout-outs. And then we send it to the rest of our community. So um, <clears throat> that is how that works. We could not do this without the amazing support from our core partners, Rata Foundation and City Council. We also have event partners for Coffee and Jam that help make this possible. Um, and as I mentioned, um, this is a free event, so in the event that you want to contribute on top of that um, and keep this running for 160,000 more, um, there's a donation box in the back, so please feel, uh, feel free to use that. So who's Ministry of Awesome? Well, you can follow all our cool stuff that we're doing on our social media. Facebook and Twitter are hot and happening, even right now, so feel free to check that out. Uh, but we're the starting point, so if you are looking for a job, if you're starting a new business, if you're looking for a space to work out of, we have all of those. In fact, uh, one cool story I wanted to share about Coffee and Jam was in the last two weeks, I've heard about three jobs from people that actually got a job from just doing a shout out or meeting somebody at Coffee and Jam. So that's yeah. what, I know, how cool is that? That's what this place is all about. You connecting with people you never met before or catching up with that person that you haven't seen in two months because you just can't get your schedules right. Um, it's, it's that platform that we, that we give people um, the opportunity to connect in and open your networks to see what you can do to help other people. So during the breaks and afterwards, please feel free to do that. Um, Yes, so it's myself. I'm the Startup Activator. We have Erica Austin. She is our uh, events awesomeness. She helps uh, run all these amazing events that we do. Uh, Lauren over here is our CEO, Chief Awesome Officer, actually. She's, um, she's the one that keeps things ticking. And we have some special guests that we'll get to. Maybe I'll let you announce them, who's here. But uh, our board is here also to support us. They're our awesome board um, and I will turn it over to Kyla to make the special announcement for today. Sweet, thanks, Katerina. Yeah. So, um, hi everybody. We just, our, I feel like our audience just tripled in size. <laughs> <laughs> what just, who are you people? What just happened? Where are you from? What's the, what's the story with this giant crowd that came in? Anybody? Um, from <coughs> Avon Moore. Say again. From Avon Moore. Uh -huh. And it's two business classes. And one of the units they have to do is on presentations. Oh, <laughs> here we are. Yes. <laughs> welcome, Aiden Moore. Can we welcome Aiden? Thanks for coming to the Jim. You're welcome here every Tuesday, every week, whenever you want. It doesn't have to be like a formal.
formal field trip with your class. You could just come along and have lunch with us. That'd be great. Um, so, uh, so I sent an email yesterday, uh, which kind of um, gave away the surprise for what I'm about to say. But uh, four years ago, uh, Vicki Buck, Sasha McMeeking, and Sam Johnson and I sat in Addington Coffee Co-op and signed a bit of paper saying Ministry of Awesome should actually be a thing, like recognized under the law by the government. It should, it should become uh, a formal entity. Uh, and we had no idea why. We had no idea what, <laughs> what we were doing, what we were going to do, what the real purpose of the organization was. We just kind of wanted to do something cool, uh, and that's how we started. Uh, and it evolved really quickly right off the bat because uh, people asked us what we were doing, and they said, oh, Ministry of Boston, that sounds great. W what is it? And we were like, oh, we better come up with an answer. <laughs> so, so very quickly we were um, forced to do some kind of deep soul searching to figure out what the, the core purpose of the organization was. Uh, and in those days, we described it in a way that um, is not quite so uh, catchy, but I used to think of it as watering the seeds of awesome. <clears throat> and the, it, it was a really intentional phrase that I had in my head, because if you think about the way that a seed grows, you can't force it. You can't reach into the seed and pull the flower out. You can't uh, make it happen. All you can do is really provide the conditions that might make it more likely for a seed to, to grow and to flower. And then the seed does the work on its own, right? And so that's the way I think about a lot of the work that Ministry of Awesome does. Is It's not about creating more awesome in Christchurch. It's not about creating more awesome in New Zealand or in the world. It's really about contributing the, to the conditions where people like you can come together, meet each other, enjoy what we call social proof, right? Seeing that ordinary people just like you are doing interesting things or starting businesses or starting projects or making things happen. Uh, and then maybe be a little bit inspired or supported to do your own awesome thing, right? So we're here to help provide those conditions and to uh, and to make those connections, as Katarina said. So since then, we've evolved, we've grown hugely from that basis, right? And we've obviously grown our team, Katarina, Erica, and Lauren, uh, doing a tremendous job. And we've also really evolved in terms of our trustees. So uh, Sam is now living up in Wellington. Uh, Vicki became deputy mayor, and so had to step down because of her conflict of interest with us. Uh, and Sasha has, has now taken over the um, Maori department at uh, University of Canterbury. Uh, and we had two wonderful new trustees join us, Jeff and Rachel, uh, who came on board a year ago, is two years? It's been two years. Jeez. Wow, crazy. Okay, so they've been with us forever now. They're all happy. So today, today, we get to introduce you to our new, new trustees, um, which is a real tremendous uh, privilege and honor. We, we put out a call for trustees uh, a, a, a couple months ago, and um, we were so incredibly gratified by the the people who responded by the kind of people who wanted to um, hang out with us and to support what we were doing and to help it grow and to help it be more impactful. Uh, and we got such a tremendous response that we ended up bringing uh, not just one new trustee on board, but two new trustees on board. Uh, and they're here today. So Suckling, uh, right over here, uh, who is uh, also chair of Callahan Innovation and chair of NZQA. Uh, and Lloyd Mander, right over here, who is on the, I'm going to get it wrong, Otatahi Community Housing Trust. Otahi. Uh, Tahi Community Maybe Housing Trust, Trust. yes, okay, uh, as well as many other skills. And I can just tell you that um, as, as one of the trustees of, of MOA, um, it, I'm so glad to have a team, Jeff and Rachel, who are uh, currently our trustees and now with Lloyd and Sue coming on the team, uh, the robustness of our uh, of the group that I get to work with is, is a real privilege for me. So, um, so uh, actually, can all four of you guys just stand up so everyone can see who you are? <laughs> and because, because today is the day to meet our new trustees on the break and after the second speaker, please do go and say hello to them. And I'm going to stop talking now because I think that's way off. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Welcome, Lloyd and Sue. Thank you. Thanks, Kyla. Um, Cardinal Rule. Things are timed here, so uh, for those learning about presentations, we do keep a timer. Something, some tips um, we can share with you during the during the coffee and jam. But uh, another tip is we do pitch practice. So when we know someone at coffee and jam is speaking ahead of time, we bring them into our office to make sure that they have have it nailed, have it down, no pressure. Um, <laughs> 
practice makes perfect. And this is a platform for people to practice, practice, practice. So hopefully this is a starting point of many more pitches that Brett will be giving to people who are really interested in his super cool idea. Um, so I will turn it over to Brett. Please bring, uh, give him a round of applause. He's going to be speaking about Smart Cross today. It's fantastic. Um, thank you so much uh, for, for coming today and, and a special welcome to Ava Moore guys. Uh, thanks also for the Ministry of Awesome for uh, organising me more than anyone else. Uh, I need organising, I'm the most disorganised person ever, but hopefully this will be right. My name is Brett O'Donnell uh, and I'm here today to talk about Smart Cross. Um, a bit of background about me, I run a software company uh, based in Christchurch. We have offices in uh, Melbourne. Uh, and in the UK as well. Uh, so we build software for electricity retailers. We've also started building some health apps recently. Uh, but that's not, that's nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about today. This is a, a really cool idea that, uh, that I think has got a uh, few legs. So SmartCross. What is SmartCross? Well what it is, is it's a interactive, really cool touchscreen device that allows pedestrians to interact with each other uh, while they're waiting to cross the road. Pretty simple, pretty basic, but let me elaborate. So, what can it be used for? Well, because the Smart Cross devices not only speak to each other, they also communicate with the internet, the possibilities are endless. So, as a bit of an example, advertising. We can be pushing some advertising messages out to these devices. Secondly, news notifications, you know, updates, uh, sports notifications, weather alerts. Uh, instant messaging. Again, because the devices speak to each other, we can actually send instant messaging between pedestrians around the city. Uh, and the cool uh, the one that I like is the arcade, arcade game. So let me just give you a little bit of a demo of Smart Cross. <laughs> this is a device, this is a Smart Cross device. And what we've done is we've installed uh, a game of Pong on this device. Now, it's pretty basic, but it gives you an idea of how we can interact uh, with this device by using, obviously, the touch panel, and I'm playing against the computer, but obviously there'd be nothing stopping you from playing against somebody across the other side <laughs> of the street. How cool would that be? So I'll leave that going there. So I know what you're all thinking. Why the heck did you build it? <laughs> and, and trust me, I ask, I ask myself a question all the time. So look, let me just back the truck up about 12 months. Um, our friends at the Christchurch City Council approached uh, WebTools about 12 months ago and said, I've just seen this really cool idea online, it's called ActiWave. And what it was, was it was uh, a couple of uh, German uh, design students had created this device, which was in fact very similar to this. So we did a bit of digging, we contacted them, we talked to them about what they had done. And it turned out to be a hoax. And I mean, it was really interesting, it was a hoax. What it was, was it was really good camera, video, editing software, and a really great social media campaign. So we sort of sat there and well, this is such a good idea, why don't we just do it ourselves? <laughs> so we did. <laughs> so, um, uh, now for those of you who are a bit more technically minded, basically this is a, uh, this is a device run by what we call a Beagle Bone Black, it's similar to a Raspberry Pi, um, and it runs, uh, runs Linux, and it's connected to a, uh, an 8 inch screen in the back, uh, and we have a capacitive touch film um, sitting behind a piece of 3mm toughened glass. So that's the, uh, that's, the, that's the details of that. So um, if it sounds a bit complicated, it is. So this device is something we've been working on for the last 12 months, and we simply think we've got it to about the right place where we can now productionise it. So why Christchurch? And what is SmartCross going to do for Christchurch? Well, it's a really good question. What it does, um, it puts us, it puts Christchurch on the map um, from, from a technical perspective. Um, the other thing it does as well is it encourages people back into the central city. So we're talking about residents, we're talking about tourists, we're talking about generating some interest within the, you know, with, within the central city. And our friends again at Christchurch City Council have uh, approved three locations to install uh, Smart Cross uh, around the city for us, which is, uh, which is really exciting. A uh, little bit about the boring stuff, because I know you're all thinking, you know, hey, this is a great idea, but does it actually, is it actually going to work? 
Number one priority for us is that the device meets New Zealand Transport Authority standards. And it does. What we've done is we've repurposed an existing uh, traffic management device and we've been sort of touchscreen on the front of it. So it meets, meets the regulations. We also use toughened glass. Uh, it has an internal shock sensor uh, and an alarm. And it also has a front facing camera to deter vandalism. Which is obviously reasonably important. Now, so why am I here talking about Smartcross? Well, we'd like a partner. <laughs> we'd like to find a partner to help us productionize Smartcross. We think there's a fantastic opportunity uh, to roll this out, not only around Christchurch, but around the world. Um, and up until now, we've not received any financial support from anyone. So we've done this off our own back, and we think now we've got to a point where it makes sense to, uh, to, to continue. So we want to create a really scalable product, and we want to sell. And we want, uh, and obviously some of the benefits of being a partner is that we're going to get some significant media exposure when we launch Smart Cross this year at Christchurch. So if you're interested, or know of anyone who is interested, then please come and have a chat. Um, please also come and have a play. It's a, it's a great device. It's, have a bit of a bit of a, uh, a bit of a go of it. And uh, look, I think it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, and uh, like to like to see it uh, in, uh, in 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 motion uh, before the end of the year. Okay. And that's it. That's a good point. Uh, so there will be there will be two devices at each intersection, um, and they're typically directly across each other. Uh, so the idea is that you want to be able to interact with a person you can kind of see across the road. You don't, you may not know them, um, but you can see them. So you can play a game. You can maybe push them a, 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 um, a, an instant message or, or something along those lines. What's to stop people's playing on all day? That's that's the idea. You get people more and more uh, more and more people using them uh, generates interest. So I think I'll get. Any other questions? Will the camera be there? Um, will its focus range be set only to, um, say, half a metre? And will it have a loop? Because, personally, <clears throat> if you put a camera somewhere, next thing you know, it's going to be accessed. Because there's already you know, facial recognition software yep. which is used in mass. And yeah. it's I think it's a stupid idea to have just proliferate cameras everywhere. I mean, you can't even walk in the street mm. what you're going to be doing. Yeah. without being a pedestrian with your face being the one of it. Just it, it is, it is 30 years ago, this didn't happen. Yeah, no, absolutely. You could be so, anonymous. Yeah, that's nice. Yep. So, uh, short answer to your question, yes, uh, it'll be a wide-angle wide, wide, wide angle lens. Um, the reason why we do it is, is to is to deter vandalism. Uh, so somebody comes and wants to, wants to break it, then we, we know who it is. Um, the other point I must note as well is the locations that we've identified around the city, they already have... Uh, pan tilt zoom cameras uh, over top and that's one of the reasons why we have actually identified these three locations around Christchurch is that they already have a lot of uh, a lot of surveillance on them um, again uh, to, uh, to, to deter vendors. How do you know if it's safe across the road? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. So, so, um, You're not going to want to. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah. Just say that. Um, and so, so what, what, uh, what Smartcross does is it has a, a, an interface from the, from the traffic management system, uh, and we can actually tell when it's safe to cross the road and when it's not. So typically, if, a, if you've got a pair of pedestrians playing a game uh, on either side of the road against each other, uh, they'll only be able to play when the man's ready. And the moment the man turns green, game over. That's it. Game over. He's one. Oh. You're one. She's one. Um, <laughs> uh, and then you won't, you won't need to be able to start again yeah. until until the man starts flashing green. I know. <laughs> one more question. I just crossed the road. Yeah. It's really not that long. How do you see it? Uh, forty-five seconds. Uh, so forty-five seconds is the uh, is, is the phase of the locations that we've um, that we've identified. Um, so basically you get a 45 second game. So that's just the game though. So there's a lot of other things you can do as well. So there might be, for example, um, you, know, you might get notifications of when the next uh, Buskers Festival um, you know, act is on, or there might, get, um, there might be uh, a weather notification you want to push out. So that'll be available at any time. Um, the games are really just a, just a, bit, of a bit of a gimmick that, uh, that we can push out. Amazing. So thank you, Brett, for presenting. Contact information, more questions.
can still be hanging out. Obviously, you can give the game a go or ask some more questions about what's going on. When that comes out, I will be in competition for the highest score, like somewhere in, <laughs> on Colombo Street or something. That seems really cool. That would be fun to play. Um, yes, so we're going to take a break and uh, fill up on the coffee and jam and things of that nature. Um, come see the team, come meet the new team members, and then we will regroup for our second presentation uh, very shortly after that. Thank you. Thank you. 